So these aren't just abstract trends, right? Many of you here this evening are likely experiencing this reality firsthand in your own parishes, an English-speaking community and a Spanish-speaking community, or a Brazilian community, or a Korean community. If you're a parishioner at St. Ignatius, uh, or St. Columkill, or St. Mary of the Angels, you belong to a shared parish. Uh, in the Archdiocese of Boston alone, for example, uh, a parish is ministered to at least 27 distinct cultural communities, uh, if not more, including Vietnamese, Haitian, Kenyan, Nigerian, Cape Verdean, Korean, Filipino, Polish, and Italian Catholics, uh, just to name a few. But even for those of you who don't currently belong to a culturally shared parish, this question of community and diversity remains highly relevant. Right here in Boston, parish mergers and clusterings have meant that all of us here likely have been faced in some way with this, this question or this task of forming community and difference, whether that difference is ideological or spiritual or organizational. The parish is traditionally defined as a stable community of the faithful, which almost sounds a little laughable given the state of our parishes uh, in the archdiocese right now. We're in a state of so much flux, right? Today we see that the parish is also a place of ambiguity, of change, of uncertainty. Our parishes are in some real sense the borderlands in our midst or one site of borderland identity in our midst. If we're committed to Pope Francis's vision of a church that's without frontiers and a mother to all, then our parishes, which for most of us uh, form our most consistent and intimate connection with that church, should be the primary locus of this solidaristic task. Perhaps more so than any other institution, parishes are places where we're invited into the challenging task of joining with and loving other people in their difference. This is not easy. This is very different than the nice sounding suggestion that we should celebrate diversity, which demands nothing more of us than general tolerance of the existence of people who are not us. Solidarity and difference requires, in the words of John Sabrino, a true conversion to the neighbor, right? a willingness to be challenged in our presumptions of normativity, a willingness to be the guest in the very place where we're used to being the host. So given the theme, of this evening, how can liturgy help to, bridge, uh, to build bridges across borders in our parishes? Uh, asked another way, at least as it's been asked by social scientists, how does ritual produce social solidarity? Research suggests that ritual does play a critical role in cultivating and strengthening social bonds. There's a great deal of research to support the idea that participating in long-standing pre-established rituals leads to intergroup cooperation. So for example, when a small faith sharing group uh, recites the Lord's Prayer at the beginning of each meeting, right, the research suggests that uh, performing that ritual action consistently helps them to strengthen their bonds as a group. Right? If you're a Girl Scout, you recite the Girl Scout law at the beginning of each meeting. If you're in the Kiwanis Club, you recite the Pledge of Allegiance or whatever, right? And we sense that, okay, something about this, it helps us to feel at home, right? It helps us to feel a shared sense of belonging. However, a recent study also suggests that new rituals, brand new rituals in newly formed groups, so among people that don't know each other, that have no prior knowledge of one another, can also promote intergroup bonding. Uh, in other words, the study found that when uh, they took people who didn't know one another at all, put them in small groups, um, and had some begin their time together, whatever they were doing, with um, a, some sort of made up ritual, something that they had just put together and said, okay, you begin each time you meet with this ritual. And the other group didn't. And by the end, uh, the group that performed this brand new prior meaningless ritual um, actually evinced higher levels of solidarity and intergroup bonding. So ritual is efficacious, even in secular settings. So there's something very important to be considered there. 